Alright, video response to Ludite Returns. The title is the video in Mendum, colon, you have failed the Watchman test. I don't know what that means, but who cares. Um, uh, so he spends the first couple of minutes of this video talking about a biodegradable man comment, I suppose, uh, accusing him of some sort of plagiarism. And he doesn't provide any details, which is really useless. Um, and then he claims to have something called intellectual integrity, or a, a kind of philosophical integrity. And uh, I would impugn you on that grounds. <laughs> I'll make accusations that you have no such integrity, you have no such honor, you have no respect for the consistency, and um, uh, you have been grotesquely duplicitous in remarks you have made in comments you have made. One minute somebody's an imbecile, the next minute they're intelligent and misunderstood, or you've overreacted or you've underreacted. There's been all kinds of, of fluctuation and inconsistency in your rhetoric, and uh, it's appalling, it's disgusting, your lack of respect for some kind of notion of um, honor to um, the caution and care and um, value. Of, of coherent dis disbursement of uh, philosophical um, uh, argumentation. It's, uh, you know, if you had any reverence for it, you wouldn't play with it like that. You wouldn't, um, you, you'd find it really quite disgusting uh, to, to see that kind of inconsistency in people's rhetoric. And you've been all over the frickin' map, buddy. So anyway, <laughs> All right, so the rest of the video, we just waste time um, griping on, on just trivial matters. I, I'm apparently not allowed to speak for um, the, the future generations who will um, uh, find themselves in a similar position to myself. I mean, I made it quite clear that I was speaking for people in a similar position to myself. I mean, people who will um, rather not have been and who might feel trapped in their existence in the sense that the... They were never provided opportunity to get out in a circumstance that made it clean and easy just to get up from the silly table and walk out the exit door. But no such door was ever provided, and uh, no ease of, of decline to play was provided. Um, and so he claims I have no authority to speak for those. So I'll speak for whatever, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, 6'1", um, males of the future, named Gary, um, who are, let's say, uh, 50 IQ points uh, more intelligent than their parents or something? I mean, what, 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 um, how, do, how exactly do I explicitly describe the philosophical perspective and say, there, I'll speak for that individual? So, yeah, we just make it one individual. I don't care. I'm going to speak for them the way no one spoke for me. Okay, that's what I'm basically arguing. Nobody was speaking for me before I was born. Um, nobody did anything, said anything, in any real way. Just partly because the world didn't provide that opportunity. I'm sure there were people around who would have testified that, uh, you know, to my parents that maybe it's not a great idea to have kids for silly and stupid and arbitrarily cultural reasons. Um, they should do better than that. And that there's this risk that their kid is going to be, um, is not going to find the game they're playing all that interesting and certainly not worthy of um, participation in any aggressive way. Um, so yeah, well anyway, I'm going to speak for that person. I don't care. You know, I mean, I don't care how much you want to limit my authority um, to classify myself and classify future people, but I certainly know you have no authority to speak for them. Yeah, I don't want you speaking for me now, and I don't want you speaking for any future individual like myself, either. So, fuck you. I just think it's a really petty thing to do, um, to say I don't have a right to speak for a class of individuals. I think I do. I have a right to testify to a life experience that I think will be duplicated in the future by future individuals, because nobody's doing anything to prevent it from happening over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah, so I'm going to speak for them. Yeah, I'm going to. 
over the course of my communications with anti natalists, uh, some have wished death upon me. To morbid atheist looks forward to winning. I'm going to keep the volume low just because his mic is so inconsistent that it um, you know, just makes the playback really annoying. So sorry about that, but I just can't afford to let him get too loud. Um, so now he's griping about death threats, and I don't think they're death threats so much as they are, I hope you get what you deserve, buddy. You deserve whatever gets piled on you, because, yeah, you're advocating for the gameplay, you're advocating for the purchase of the negative lottery tickets, and so, yeah, you should, it should fall on you. If pianos have to fall on somebody, they should be falling on you. Get cancer, and so on and so forth. No, I'm not complaining. Um, to be expected, given the hyperpartisan nature of some of my videos. But a warm message goes out to biodegradable man. You see, philosophy is the core of my being. It's the foundation of my existence. Yeah, I just find that um, <laughs> laughable. Um, just, just you know, like I said, even to have Nietzsche then as your as your um, token icon, um, the inconsistency again. And the uh, almost um, 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 trivial convenience of his philosophy, which was basically to be a huge naysayer and nitpicker. And then when it came to having to affirm something, what did he affirm? Uh, Tyrannus human rex? Yeah, tr let's, let's create Tyrannus human rex. That's the, the nature of his only construct of a positive statement to make was let's be as insidious a monster as we can be if that's all the game is if the game is be a, be a monster be the best monster possible be it as monstrous as monster can make you yeah no sorry you, you can't be I, I can't qualify that as philosophical thought that's it's juvenile video game philosophy something that I take quite seriously and, and integrity relative to it. A biodegradable man, you have accused me of plagiarism several times. And this is not something that I appreciate. Yeah, well, whatever. You should probably put that in a, in a video called Biodegradable Man, You is a Poophead. Or whatever you want to say. But the biodegradable man's really a clever fellow. So, um, he does get a little hyperbole. So, yeah, maybe hyperbole all over you a little, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. He's worth it, to tell you the truth. He's worth it. In fact, you can fuck off. Wishing death upon me is one thing, but to falsely accuse me of plagiarism, I don't appreciate. Um, some of you antinatalists may not... Yeah, whatever. I, yeah, we don't know. I've got to turn the volume down again. Um, yeah, so, yeah, without details, uh, so we don't know. Um, but whatever, your whole philosophy is kind of a plagiarism, isn't it? Um... You know, of other philosophers. Isn't that what most of you people are doing with your rhetoric? You use their jargon. You use their framework. You use the context they create. Um, so in a sense, you're, you're just... You're, you're plagiarizing... Um, um, you know, constructs. You know, they're tinker toys. They make something out of tinker toys. And you're, you're basically trying to duplicate their mush. Their, their house of cards. And so, yeah, you'll throw in some modern crapola in, in this construct, but just keep pretending that you're doing something, and you're not doing anything. You're just reinventing God. I understand that. I understand this. But not all of us judge the value of our lives in terms of positive and negative hedonic experience. Yeah, again, those are that's all your rhetoric, okay? I don't do... do I likewise do not judge lives based on positive and negative hedonic experiences. I, once again, I've stated it many, many times. I don't think the positive is a reality anyway. Um, it's just less negative. And um, so I don't even concede the reality of it as a substantive thing. And I certainly wouldn't trade any negatives for any silly positives, any real negatives. So by those measures alone, it's fail. So, so, yes, I, I certainly wouldn't torture anything um, for the necessity of even having philosophical integrity. The fact that it's valuable is no doubt about it. It's worth something. Integrity. But I wouldn't torture something to have it. 
something like the intrinsic value of integrity in philosophy um, relative to our experience, something we would be willing to die for, something we would be willing to suffer for, right? Um, so this insult, this false accusation, is more harming uh, to the core of my being um, than any knife, uh, than any bullet, and so on. So truly mm -hmm. and honestly. Yeah, well, whatever. I guess that's sort of the reason why you maybe should explain what exactly the, um, the nature of the knife is, if you're going to say it's a knife. I mean, if he's, if he's throwing things of that gravity in terms of an accusation, then maybe you should provide more information. Fuck you for that biodegradable man. His response in Mintham... Yeah, well, I mean, of all the slanders you've come up with, I mean, you, you sit there and malign people's sensitivity. Um, you reward people who are grotesque in doing that, calling it guilt-mongering or some other kind of nonsense because people really say, oh yeah, yeah, I think it's a good idea if people thought about the risks of what, it, what might happen in procreation. I mean, there's people making arguments here, right? Videos that you support and defend, um, making statements that somehow people should avoid contemplating the um, negative risks of their behavior. They should pretend that they don't exist. ...says that he speaks for those individuals who have evaluatively come to the conclusion that they'd rather not have been, or those, perhaps, that are in existence but may lack the force or strength of will in order to remove themselves. He's their spokesman. Now, you were big on the democracy thing. I would ask, is this an elected position in Mintan? I, I wish it could be. I mean, I, I really do. I wish we could have an election, and uh, there. I wish I could have voted before I was born also, or even after I was born. I wish I could vote for a representative um, to make the argument. So, yeah, I have nothing, you know, I'm just filling a void that exists and claiming a right, okay, to speak for people who haven't been allowed to speak. And they really haven't been culturally allowed to speak. You know, I'd say the argument hasn't had um, the public hearing it deserves. So, whether it's me who speaks for it or somebody else, I have. I'm just saying, are you are you opposed to somebody speaking for that position, and are you making an accusation that I'm somehow misrepresenting that argument? Is that your accusation? I don't mind. Again, if you want to narrow who I'm speaking for, go ahead and narrow it. So again, this is just, uh, again, all I can argue is that this is just petty crap. It's just petty bullshit. Um, no, it's not an elected position, but I wish it could be. Or self-appointed. Did you obtain the consent of all of these millions of individuals to act as their spokesman? You've already um, raped them, and and in 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 the sense you've your your will force them into existence in a future, and there's nobody in the present to defend them against your rape, your action, your aggression. You're the one aggressively saying, "I will fuck with you, I will put you in harm's way, I will jeopardize your welfare." Now, how do I, in some way, uh, this is the only way that future can interfere? and make any claim against you whatsoever is to speak from experience, to say, okay, I was one of those victims, I was one of those people fucked with by assholes just like you, arrogant, obnoxious jackasses who think they are in control, who think they know what they're doing, and who think it for some kind of silly reason too, like, oh, we're just going to have kids because everybody else is doing it, because it's the stylish thing to do, or some other kind of bullshit. So yeah, I'll speak for the people who find that offensive, who, who find it obnoxious and noxious to their sensibilities that people would be so fucking outrageously egomaniacal. Yeah, I'll speak for them. Yeah. It's going to take a better man than you and a better argument than you're making to tell me why I shouldn't be. You're not going to shut me up, that's for sure. Fuck you. Before labeling yourself as their spokesman, or are you imposing that upon them? By what authority do you pretend to speak for millions? 
by the authority of the credibility and integrity of my definition of who I'm speaking for. I don't claim to be speaking for Republicans or Christians or something else. I've narrowed who I'm speaking for to somebody who would be agreeable to exactly what I'm speaking about. I'm not claiming to speak for some them and to make up some kind of lies to put in their mouth. I'm saying the people who are in this certain circumstance, not in that circumstance or that circumstance, but this circumstance. And I think I've narrowed it sufficiently. So I don't think there's... You, you, if you're going to make a claim, then show me somebody who feels or is claiming misrepresentation. Show me a victim of my crime. I'm showing you a victim of your crime. I'm showing it to you. I'm revealing the victim to you. And look how you're reacting. <laughs> yeah, you don't like witnesses. You uh, chastise parents for not obtaining the strictly logically impossible task of... Uh, no, I don't, I, I don't chastise them for not getting something that's impossible to get. What I'm chastising them for is in the circumstance where it is impossible to get consent, I'm saying you're at a higher order of responsibility. You have to do exactly what Anticontivat is saying you don't have to do. That means you have to think about every possible risk and you have to work out every possible circumstance to make sure that you're going to do exactly what needs to get done to make sure that this is a safe trip, so to speak, that there is no accidents and disasters and catastrophes. You're going to have to be very, very conscientious. And on top of that, you're going to have to come up with some explanation for why you're going to accept the risk you can't control, the part of the equation you can't fix. Yes, you can control whether you're drunk. You can control whether you're delusional and stupid and arrogant and egomaniacal and selfish. You can control certain things about this act, but what you can't control is all of it. And the part that you can't control, you have to have an excuse for accepting that risk, for imposing that risk. And what I'm asking for, the horror I'm asking for, the terrible burden I'm asking, is that you come up with that paragraph of explanation. That you explain what purpose is going to be served besides satisfying your needs, your deprivation, your want. Explain to me what in the world will be resolved through this behavior, what problem will be solved that is not your problem. And until you do that, I'm saying you have failed to meet your responsibilities. Obtaining the consent of a non-exister, and yet you and yourself have stated you would push the red button, violating the consent of literally billions of people. Who would well, again, I, it, you can stop rape with um, force. You can stop murder with force. You can stop a crime with a criminal trespass with equal amounts of imposition. So you can, you can resolve the crime of imposition with imposition. That's just a fact of reality. And it, sometimes it comes to horrific war. You, and you have to sanction it. You have to say, yes, we have to go to war because we have to stop this motherfucker. So we have to accept evil to stop evil. And that's, uh, I'm not doing it because I want that to be the resolution, because I want that to be the way the problem is solved. I'm saying, though, is if solving the problem is on the table, and this is the only viable way to do it, then it's going to get solved. That's right. You, you have to pay a price for things. And that'll be the price you have to pay to stop this crime. And it is a fucking crime, in my opinion. It's a clear crime. Rather not die. Right. But that's okay, right? No, no, you're allowed to impose on billions of people, whereas a procreator, if we're going to speak of imposition, one, two, three children, so on and so forth. Yeah, well, we know that one, two, three children multiplied times seven billion people on Earth adds up to 14 billion people. When I was a kid, there was three billion people on Earth. All of a sudden, now there's seven billion people. So we see the consequence of one, two, three bullshit. We see this, this, this minor crime adds up to a major murder. And that's what the reality is. And it's being sanctioned by people who have no authority, no control. They have none of these necessary characteristics. They, have, they are not creating fairness. They are not creating deserve. And they are not doing anything to compensate for their lack of consent. And what I'm saying is, is those are the minimums. 
if you're not going to if you're not going to do your best to create a fair world if you're not going to do your best to create a world where deserve has everything to do with it and you're not going to do everything possible um, to compensate for the fact that you don't get consent then I'm going to argue you haven't satisfied your minimum responsibility and you have no right to play God because you have no godlike powers. But hey, that's okay, right? So in video after video, and Mintam has engaged in this kind of hyper-biological reductionism, if you will. Um, so you think this is a fair description, a hyper-biological reductionism. Oh, I've, you mean I've, I've resorted to the argument from evolution. There's no hyper involved here, okay, besides the fact that all you pussy atheists and pussy scientists and non-realistic philosophers um, are pretending, okay, that you can have the religion without the God, that you can keep the fables and fantasies and bullshits and lies and just get rid of the silly deity. And no, you can't do that. When you get rid of, when you kill God, when you do as Nietzsche says, um, and realize there is no God, then you have to get rid of all the trappings, all of his footwear and his business suits, and you know, you've got to clean the closet and start over from scratch. And when you do that, when you clean the closet of all the godly bullshit, you're just stuck with tyrannohuman wrecks. You're stuck with nothing. There's nothing there. There's just a biology. There's just chemistry. There's just a molecule replicating. And it's doing it in an insidious manner, creating a pointless and idiotic four billion year old gladiator war to accomplish absolutely nothing. DNA molecule replication. I mean, and then suddenly he's extolling the virtues of the life of the mind. And even the very notion of mind, if you will, is something that he is like. Well, let's just be clear. I used it in one video. And uh, as everybody knows, I think, uh, anybody who's watched any of my videos in any kind of context, I would always make mind synonymous with brain. Um, and I'm just saying that we have this capacity to be intellectual. And that's what I was equating as mind and saying this is the true value of us is this intellectual capacity. So here you, 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 you premise your video, you begin your video with this argument, this statement about this eloquent passion you have for the integrity of philosophy. And now, here you are demonstrating exactly the duplicity and hypocrisy I pointed out. Here your lack of regard for the integrity of those words, the integrity of that passion, now you are using it in a petty manner to somehow impugn somebody for claiming that exact attribute is having value. So when it's to your convenience in an argument, you will now slaughter the very uh, element of, of existence you found to cherish before, demonstrating that you have no integrity that you spoke of back here. This integrity you spoke of back here is, has no depth. It has no reality, um, because here you will rape it, clearly, overtly. Invested time and time again, right? Now all of a sudden Plato's on a pedestal. Uh, silly. I didn't put Plato on any pedestals. I just merely mentioned him as the list of names of all the, 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 the through the lineage of our human development, that you can list these names. So some of them might be rapists, some of them might be all kinds of silly things. Um, but the truth is, is that's what we, we can represent our growth and the growth of our knowledge through these icons, these little frickin' boxes with little faces on them, um, as, par as the tokens through which you can um, metaphorize um, the the lineage of knowledge. And I merely mentioned Plato. I did not stole him. I just merely mentioned him. I could have said Aristotle. Would that make a big difference for you? And then when he engages in this kind of self-dichotomy, right, this is another, you know, I've been accused of being an Ivor Tower type, if you will. 
But this far exceeds anything that I have engaged in or procreators in general, right? Um, far exceeds what? What exactly? The fact that I pointed out that we have evolved intellectually. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't get you. That he can speak for the intentionality and the effects, if you will, um, of procreation relative to biology. That I could make a statement saying that, yes, people claim a right, okay? They do. That's what I'm countering. People claim a right from biology to have kids. I'm saying because biology gives you the capacity to do something, it doesn't give you the right to use it. I'm not saying there's no rights to use it. I'm saying you have to demonstrate the right. So if we did, if we were built like an assassin bug, or we, or we had some more vicious weapon, some overt, like a machine gun built into our forehead, it wouldn't be that you could never use the machine gun, but you'd have to justify using the machine gun. In mass, again, by what authority do you pretend to do this? No, well, by the same authority, I pretend to say that because you have a penis doesn't mean you have a right to rape and anything else like that. It's okay for you to charge that it's just DNA replication, replication for the sake of replication. Um, but no to charge, like that's some sort of bold and outrageous thing to say, right? So again, what, for, from what evidence is there some doubt about the truth of our origins? Do you doubt abiogenesis? Do you doubt uh, that it was a billion years before um, cells became multicellular? Um, do you doubt uh, that it's only been 500 million of those years that the creatures have had any kind of substantive neurology? Well, I mean, what, what part of the evolutionary theory, as I argue, uh, do you have some significant doubt regarding the veracity of those claims? Oh, no, you don't give license to biology, as if all procreators, that's merely what they're doing. Of course not. Yeah, well, and where did I claim they were? Where did I claim they were procreating because of biology? My argument was that they're using biology as an excuse for procreating. And I'm saying, well, that excuse is off the table. The fact that you can, the fact that nature gave you the ability to replicate does not mean you have any right to replicate. That's all I'm saying. And so now let's get to the real argument about why people replicate. And that, that argument I've certainly made as being one surrounding ego and farm workers and family name and lots of evil and malicious usury purposes to having children. People have children as a use, okay? They don't do it, it's then use means abuse. Use is abuse. You can't separate the two. As soon as you're using a kid, you're abusing a kid, in my opinion. It's the holistic features that are contingent upon the biology, but not the biology. The holistic features that are contingent on the biology. The holistic features. You mean the selfish, egomaniacal bullshit. Is that the holistic feature you're speaking of? The um, um, alpha sensation of power. You know, you will raise your cub to the universe and show it off. Is, is that what you're saying? You'll use uh, the child as demonstration of your substantialness is that yeah well whatever it is whatever this holistic crap is that I would like you to detail let me hear some more of this holistic purpose you see so again by what authority what test did you pass right. your YouTube videos is that the is that the metric I don't know. I, I mean, again, what test do I have to pass? Are you saying that there, again, I'm, going to, I'm arguing that the biology provides this mechanism and that culture and psychological nonsense create the intention to use it in this manner. Salmon do not swim upstream to create baby salmon. They're swimming upstream for a different purpose. Human beings do not have children because the biology mandates them having children. They have children 
knowing, okay, um, for a purpose other than biological, sex and procreation for any reasonably intelligent human are separate activities. Um, no. Fail. Fail at the most fundamental level. The epistemological problem relative to ethical theorizing is entrapped. The epistemological blah blah relative to ethical blah blah is intractable. I don't think so. Right. And you yourself have stated as such that where there is a kind of incommensurability at the most basic levels. Incommensurability at the most basic levels. That's right. We don't have anything in common in terms of having a conversation because you have no you place no value on um, suffering and you place no added value on suffering when it is imposed by selfish purpose. So where I take suffering and say it's this big and I make it that big when it's imposed, you do almost the opposite. You make suffering nothing and then you make it even you make it go away entirely almost when somebody's selfishly imposing it so yeah we have nothing we have no common ground there's really no more discussion to be had right and that's right yeah the thing i think is most precious in the universe suffering you think the most precious thing in the universe is some sort of philosophical notion of pretty flower or oh what a wonderful sentence. Maybe I'll write it on something and go look at it on the mantle. So where you put value on shit, stupid human perceptions of shit, I put value on uh, sentient organisms having sensations that are noxiously obnoxious. And... Um... Yes, now I'm not arguing that moral anti-realism via intractability. I've never argued that. Moral anti-realism something intractability. Moral anti-realism. I, I don't know what to make. I don't know what that is. Moral anti-realism. I don't know what that is. But it seems as if the epistemological problem staring you in the face is um, of no account. Again, what epistemological problem? Again, the narrative is quite clear. Um, it's a, an infestation. And because the humans um, are claiming um, some sort of um, self-aggrandizing status through the process of the infestation, their claim doesn't have any credibility. Their claim is vacant. There's no evidence uh, justifying their claim. Just as there's no evidence of us missing the non-existent Martians, or missing the non-existent Venetians, or the Saturnites, or the Plutonians, or the Mercuryites, or the Munikins. None of them are being missed because, obviously, it has no value except to the self-obsessed organism. Without the mirror, without your capacity to self-reflect yourself into something, you will see no value. And that reveals how synthetic and how fake and how plastic um, all your speaking of beauty and integrity is. Because it only has any meaning to you if you can see yourself in it. You, you lack philosophic humility. Philosophic humility. By that he means that somehow we are supposed to be humble in the face of what has been revealed of the universe. And I'm just saying no. That you do it. That does it. That has, should have. It should have the exact opposite effect. You land on the moon. You shouldn't be humble. You should be like, damn, we kick ass. We did pretty good, and we learned a hell of a lot. 
and you make yourself a Hubble telescope and you learn some more and you do lots of laboratory experiments and learn some more um, so yeah we have mastered uh, uh, um, much of what it takes to build sufficient glassware to see reality we've done a good enough job of it and we have enough facts to know there is no God Nietzsche as Nietzsche said he's dead okay and the trappings his luggage everything should go out with him and when you clean house you will see what house is and house is not a good thing the structure and nature of existence is crap and it just is thank you for listening blah 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 no thank you for the slander and such and that's all it really was right <laughs> yeah a bunch of straw man misinterpretations perversions of my position and my um, intent and my ambition and um, the integrity of the reference knowledge that draws me compels me to speak what I speak yeah so fuck you for that and such so forth and whatnot Remy, I haven't seen Remy in a long time. The last thing you want to tell a troll is that he's wounded you. Yeah, I don't know. But a degradable man, I don't think really cares. <laughs> you know, he doesn't. He just throws arrows. He doesn't really. He doesn't care to watch them land. He's just good at it. Yeah, he really is good. Yeah, he's a witty guy. I'm not saying he's not wrong sometimes. I'm just saying he's. He's got a style that you just can't deny. Uh, yeah. I mean, unlike the Quinta kind of absolute crap, you know, this kind of crap, this kind of evil crap, cheating crap, you know. Oh, there's Karen speaking of crap. Oh, no. I don't know what you said, though. From Fave 5, you say, It seems to me as the epistemological problem staring you in the face is no account because you lack philosophical humility. To that, I would just add a line from Derived Energy. Death is the only answer. Well, again, this is an in mendum video. Why? Well, now I have to answer for Derived Energy. So I can't speak for people who in the future will be born under the circumstances under which I was born and who will develop philosophy similar to my own. I am not allowed to speak for them, but I must speak for derived energy. I must account for his statements. Is that how you play the game, you people? Apparently that's how you play the game. It doesn't matter, though. I guess I would say that derived energy usually says something pretty consistent. Um, death is the only answer. Well, you know, like I said, I don't think death is the only answer. I think not procreating is the answer. But, to some extent, yes, you will have to end lives to prevent lives. That's probably just the truth. You know, I mean, whether you're ending jellyfish or not, I mean, who cares, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to worry about the jellyfish holocaust. Yeah, really not. Especially when you consider that all the animals are doomed. They're all going to die anyway. And if you can kill them in a few microseconds, gee. I mean, that's, you know, that's doing them a hell of a favor. Than leaving them just hanging out there waiting to get eaten by mites or something. You know. Yeah. A, a grim reaper with a nuclear bomb. I'd vote for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nuke me the fuck out of here. I'd much rather than the some sort of slow, um, you know, eat me to death a cell at a time kind of bullshit. So, fuck you. 
I mean, you know, and then you got this Ethel Fuhrer guys talking on your video. You're proud of that. I mean, speaking of integrity, you let this asshole, you know, post this this slander as an icon. You give me grief over you saying the word Plato, just saying the word Plato. And you let this guy do that. You know, 